Ladies and gentlemen, Notification Nation, what's going on? What's happening? I am back like a shirt tag, and we are here with a new episode of All Pro Football 2K8 featuring my team, your team, same team, same dream, the Detroit Iron. Now, it has been a relatively easy season up until this point. We have had some close games, but... We have also had some games where we have blown the other team completely out of the water. And really, to be honest with you, I do not see this slowing down. But this has been a pattern for us throughout this series. We will do extremely good during the regular season. But then when it comes time to the playoffs to show what team we really are, yeah, I, mm. It doesn't happen, all right? It does not happen the way I picture it in my mind whatsoever. However, this team does feel kind of different, and you might have heard me say that a lot on this channel, but I am trying to get us back where we are and where we should be, to be honest, especially since that last season with the San Diego Gorillas when we went all the way to the championship game and we ran that table and we left with that trip, right? But today, we are still in the regular season with the Detroit Iron, and we are going head-to-head -head with the St. Louis Rhinos, and this is gonna be a tough team, but we're tough, right? Well, well, let's be honest about that, all right? Troy Aikman is gonna try and hold it down. He's got Gale Sayers in the backfield, so that might be trouble for us, but we have my man in the whole 100 grand, Buddy Rogers, we have Raymond Berry, we have Matt Snell, and this offensive trio could spell a lot of trouble for this Rhinos defense, but let's go ahead and get things cracking. It is third down and 11 at the 32 yard line, and Troy Aikman goes down at the hands of Matt Sandoval as he picks up his first sack of the game and a clutch sack that was indeed third down and 12 looking down the middle of the field and it is my man in a whole hundred grand eric green wide open making the catch and holding on to it through the contact which is probably the most important part i ain't gonna hold you pass is complete and that is rocket ishmael going down at the 12 yard line of the st louis rhinos he has been playing extremely well all season and i don't see it slowing down it's not going to slow down in this game either. And shout out to Williamson. He's been non-existent throughout this whole season, but he just got a touchdown, and I'm glad that he did. We go up 7 to nothing over the Rhinos, and it's a repeat performance from their first drive. It's another sack, and this might get ugly for the Rhinos. Not going to hold y'all. Third down and six. Dropping back is Rodgers. Looking to the left, and it's Rocket Ishmael letting the ball go straight through his hands. We got to take another look at how this happened. Wow. Wow. Willie Wood was in the area, but that should have been a reception, and it should have been a big first down for our team. It's not. Gail Sayers will make the catch, and on second down and 10, he will pick up a gain of five yards, and that is gonna bring us to the close of the first quarter where we are still holding it down. Seven to nothing over the St. Louis Rhinos in our home. You gotta love it. Third down and five. Aikman has plenty of time, but Lane would not let him complete that pass whatsoever. It looked like it could have been a pick, but my man ain't got no hands, all right? Pass is complete. And it's Eric Green going down at the 23-yard line. That is going to be 40 yards and a big first down for the Detroit Iron. Third down and seven. Looking down the middle of the field, and it's Corey Romo. Corey Romo, however, does not play for the Detroit Iron. That was supposed to be a pass complete for a touchdown to Rocket Ishmael. But that was a little janky. I'm not going to hold y'all. That ball, I don't know. It was a beach ball, okay? And it was very easy to intercept for Corey Romo. He gets his first interception of the game. And now Aikman gets hit as he throws. And that is no good for the St. Louis Rhinos. They can't get anything going. 
and our defense continues to show up and show out like they have been all season. Aikman has two passing yards. I don't know if y'all heard me correct. He has two passing yards. Rodgers switching up the play. Handoff goes to Matt Snell, and that should have been a first down. I don't, I don't know what happened there. Not really sure, but it still is a positive gain, and it's a gain of four. Back-to-back -back small gains, but this one is going to take us for a first down now from the St. Louis 41-yard line. It is third down and eight. Rodgers has time in the pocket, and look at Raymond Barrett. How did you make that catch, sir? I, don't, I have no idea. It was a spinning, one-handed catch. And when you do stuff like that, you got to reward your number one receiver. We will pass it to him again on the left side of the field. He will take us into the five-yard line. Now from the two, it's Matt Snell pushing people out of the way like they are not grown men as well. And he will get into the end zone. Touchdown for the Detroit Pride. We now have taken yet another touchdown from this St. Louis team. And that time we took it straight to the teeth of the defense, getting that one. And now it's Lane with the interception. Earlier he had a deflection that I said should have been an interception. This time he gets both hands on it and secures it. And Lane gets his first from? interception of the game. And that's right, where did he come from? I mean, he was guarding the man the whole time. You should have seen him. First down in 10 at the 41 yard line. Flea Flicker engaged. Pass goes over the middle and it's Raymond Berry. No, that should have been a touchdown. And I really did try to challenge this. I'm not gonna hold you. I did not realize we were inside of two minutes. I was, I was in the zone. Did not realize, was not able to challenge it and they did not take a look at it. But I felt like that should have been called a touchdown from Jump Street. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below because I think that was a touchdown. And no, no. At the 20 yard line, we throw an interception. St. Louis big, will big, take big, over at the big, nine, big. and it's Corey Romo again. Somebody get this man a star. He will take you far. Beautiful. Jumped that route. He had it sniffed out. He jumped it, got the interception. That is going to end the half for us as we tried to put another touchdown on the board, but it was not possible. Nonetheless, we still have a 14-point lead, but here we go with the halftime show. 185 total yards for us, and it's 22 for them. Eight first downs for us, one for them. We are absolutely dominating and I do not see us letting up off the gas anytime soon handoff goes to Matt Snell he will shake a man break a tackle and pick up a handful of yards second down and five working out of the I formation and man whenever they catch these passes it is super duper slow all the momentum is just taken right out of the play Luckily, we were still able to pick up a first down. Now it's going to be a handoff to Hicks. And it's also going to be a gain of seven yards. And I felt like a running back like Hicks probably could have got more out of that. We didn't do enough, though. Did not even close. Not even close. Pass to Hicks on third and four. And I was just talking about those passes. It's, it's, it's not a good thing. Not at all. Handoff goes to Gale Sayers. And we do not need him to wake up this late in the game. He'll pick up a gain of six on the play. Aikman releases. Going to find Gale Sayers who breaks the initial tackle. And still takes this one for a gain of seven yards. And a first down as well. And a much needed first down for the St. Louis Rhinos at that. Aikman dropping back on second down and eight. And I really thought Browner was going to jump that one. He did not. Pass is complete. And it's a first down. Handoff goes up the middle to Gale Sayers on third down and seven. Why? I don't understand. I'm not sure I ever will. They will set up for a field goal. And from 44 yards out, the kick is good as Kevin Setter looks like he's the MVP for the Rhinos so far here in this game 30 seconds left to go in the third quarter it is third down and 13 and Rodgers 
was looking for Raymond Berry, but he almost found the other team again. That could have been the third interception. We are thankful that it is not. We have reached the end of the third quarter. We are still leading by two possessions, 14 to three, but that can change at any moment. Third down and 10. They'll get it to Gale Sayers, but he will not pick up a first down as Night Train Lane shuts that one down. Second down and 10. And it's a fumble from Matt Snell. A rare fumble from Matt Snell at that, and it is recovered by the defense. Not what you want. Not in the fourth quarter whatsoever. We got to take another look at this one. It's just punched right out. Willie Wood gets that ball out of his hands. And this might change the momentum of the game and swing things in the favor of the St. Louis Rhinos. But we are still home, and I think we can defend our home territory. Pass is complete. Not enough for a first down. It was a gain of eight. Now it is third down and three at the 19-yard line. Handoff goes to Gale Sayers, and it's not a first down. We stop them. We shut them down. They will now set up for a field goal from the 20. Kick is up, and it looked a little janky at first. I'm not going to hold. But it is good nonetheless, and Setter has added to the Rhinos total. It is now 6-14, to 14, a one-possession game. In my eyes, all we need to do and score a touchdown, and this one is over. Handoff goes up the middle to Matt Snell, and Matt Snell will take us to the 50-yard line. Corey Romo, two interceptions and two deflections. The man is out here balling. First down and 10, and we had a man open. Cartwright was not the man that I just seen. It's always wild watching these back, calling these games, because you always see something that you should have done differently and then when you play the next time you still don't do it so it's interesting pass is over the middle and that is simpson with the catch and i don't even know if i've called his name all season but i do know that he just got us a first down we cannot pick up a touchdown on third and 10 and we miss the field goal epstein is wide right and now the Rhinos have a chance to get back into this game and possibly win it. Pass is complete. That is going to be a first down, second down, and 11. Another pass complete, and Aikman is starting to catch fire, which is not what we want whatsoever. Third down and five at the 46-yard line. Pass is complete, and Gail Sayers, had he not stuttered, might have picked up that first down or at least got about a gain of three or four. Fourth down and four now, and this might be St. Louis's last chance, and it is. Sack on the play by Fior, and that is going to do it. We pick up another victory, and we remain undefeated throughout the season. We have never, ever, and I mean never, ever, even even off camera i have never gone 16 and 0 but this would be extremely cool and judging by the last half of our schedule it might be a possibility all right it really might be a possibility because i don't think there may be one team that has a winning record in our remaining games i'm telling you this east is absolutely terrible this year but we are doing really well and we will continue to do really well because even if we start losing, I still feel like we have a shot to make it to the playoffs and even the championship game. I have that much faith in this team. Man, I appreciate y'all stopping with me and rocking with me throughout this whole episode and this series. If you are new here but like what I do here, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Drop me a comment. You talk, I talk back because I've been me, you been you, and until the next time we speak, I'm out.